Julio, if I were to believe your new theory of consciousness, integrated information theory, what are the implications to determine the level of consciousness, or even is there consciousness in various uh, uh, animals on the phylogenetic scale, or, or even non-biological uh, uh, entities? The theory itself, I think, both enlarges and restricts the scope of what exists from the inside of what is conscious. Let me give you a few examples, although I never know the precise answer because we can't measure these things properly yet. It expands it in the sense that I would expect fully then that if we could measure these uh, structures, this maximally reducible conceptual structures, which are the shapes of experience in animals, we would see that many animals which are not that different from us in terms of their brain and their behavior, not surprisingly, would also be able to generate such shapes. So we would have the confirmation that they are conscious too, and we would be able to sort of measure how much, a little bit less than us, just as much as us, which is interesting with, say, whales and dolphins and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And what kind of consciousness? Does a bat perceive uh, the space around it sort of like we? perceive it visually or more like we perceive it with uh, audition, okay? Those are interesting questions that could be answered that way. And then you go down to animals that are more and more alien from us, like a lizard, for instance, or an iguana, or an octopus, or you name it, whatever you want, whatever your favorite animals, or bees, or ants, and you could ask whether indeed there is something it is like to be that animal, how much, and what kind. And I would expect that you're going to find something much more extensively that we currently suspect. You would probably find it where you don't expect it, more than you expect, sometimes less than you expect, and you have a way to go about it. You might even find it down to very, very small things. Maybe individual cells in your body may have some of it, or some parts of the cells. Maybe even very simple mechanisms, uh, as long as they have a way to influence the various pieces so that there is feedback inside, they might have a minimum of consciousness. But it's so low, so low, that it will almost feel like nothing to be those mechanisms. But there's a huge difference between something, no matter how low, and nothing. So what, what are some uh, mechanisms that might have extremely low consciousness, but something above zero? Well, the theory predicts that, for instance, uh, a mechanism with a feedback loop where the two elements, say two binary elements, can influence each other in an interesting way, can actually generate the minimum of consciousness. Now that minimum is really minimal. And in the sense that, uh, a, you know, minus 273.2 is uh, certainly <laughs> not yeah. zero temperature, yeah. but right. it is certainly damn cold. Right. Okay? Right. So, and if you were in that situation, you would probably not feel like anything at all. But mm -hmm. this is what we use, you know, language for right now. We have no words to describe that mm -hmm. to be only one conscious as opposed to a million conscious. Okay, but we, you would be able to figure that out and see what has it and what doesn't. But just as the theory expands, what but probably, first yeah, of all, yeah. I, I think that uh, I want to explore non-biological because yeah. if you have some very simple element, you have a small amount. We have the capabilities today of building computers with billions of, of, uh, of uh, transistor uh, trip, uh, chips, um, chips uh, and it'll soon be trillions, and, and who knows where uh, Moore's law might, uh, might end, but there's an enormous number. Clearly, we can, we can duplicate uh, more states uh, physically than we have in our brains at some point. Yes, undoubtedly, and so you don't only have computers, you have the internet, you have galaxies, you can tell me all kinds of things. You have societies of people, you have cities. Are they conscious too? The theory definitely says no. In most of these cases, the answer is presumably no, because if we could do the analysis, and this is a guess on my part, with our qualia scope, we were to go around and measure if they form maximally reducible conceptual structures. The claim would be that, for instance, aggregates of people, of cells, of whatever you want, don't give rise to experience. You may have it, I have it, the two of us don't form a superordinate experience on top of you and me, for right. instance. Right. A CT would not do that either, okay? A computer, let's take a computer. According to the theory, most likely, a computer, even if it were to simulate a very sophisticated behavior, for instance, it were able to recognize faces, drive a car, win in jeopardy, as they now can do, and sooner or later they'll do much more than that, well, that computer will not have an experience that corresponds to it. There may be a little bit of experience in each of the transistors of the computer, for all I know, mm. because they have some causal power, but the computer as such 
what it does would have no experience whatsoever. This is important because, of course, it means, according to the theory, even if your input-out behavior is the same, even if this computer one day answers the question just as well as you do, in every circumstance, so it passes the so-called Turing test, and I have no way, just by looking at behavior, to distinguish it from you and me, well, the theory says... And that the entity would claim to be conscious. The entity could argue and, and get, into it. get mad at you if you said it was Mad at you and say that you're offending it and so on and so forth. It would say all the same things that you would say. And yet the theory says that if it is not built in a certain way, if it is like current computers are, there will be nothing it is like to be that thing. So it doesn't matter just what you do according to the theory, but exactly how it is done. So you see, for example, this means that... Uh, Already now, and certainly soon in the future, I should be able to have a conversation with my phone, which is just as satisfactory as the one I'm having with you, maybe. And, uh, at, you know, at the same time, the theory would say that it would be fooled if we were to analyze how the phone does it, if it does it according to the principles we are using now, there would be nothing it is like to be our phone. So, we have to be careful then, says the theory, if you validate it based on the predictions it makes, how it explains the situation which we know consciousness is or is not there, is this and not that way, we can then extrapolate to situations which are very difficult to judge because how do I determine that my phone is not conscious if it speaks to me much better than a patient who is there is only trying to open his mouth but can't right. even do it? The theory would give you a way to do that. But so many things would not be conscious. That's a key implication. Does this refute the uh, philosophical position of functionalism, where if you can reproduce the function of the brain in any other medium, that you would basically have consciousness? Completely. It says it matters how you do it, as in many other things. It's even more extreme. It says that even if you were to simulate, not my behavior, but how my neurons interact with each other, which is what you know, several groups are now trying to do, simulate in detail the functioning of the neurons in your brain, how they are connected, etc., which is a very worthy enterprise, no doubt about that, to understand how it works and predict how it might work next and so on and so forth. Even so, a simulation is not the real thing. To be conscious, you must be a physical entity of a certain kind that can constrain its past and the future in a certain way. A simulation is not that kind of simulation. So the claim that some people would have in the future that they could upload every activity of their brain, uh, even down to the quantum level, that may be theoretically impossible, but suppose it were possible that you could take every quantum state within your brain and upload it onto a computer in a thousand years from now. The claim, your claim would be that that entity on the computer might look the same, might respond to questions, but would not be conscious? Yes, my claim would be that you would be very careful in spending a lot of money and putting a lot of hopes yeah. into being able to download or upload you into a computer. What you would have created, says the theory, is most likely is a perfect zombie. Somebody who acts exactly like you, other people would mistake it for you, but you wouldn't be there. Some people claim that a perfect zombie is impossible because if you reproduce the, uh, uh, the, the elements that generate um, uh, the activity, the behavior, then that is the behavior, that, that, that's functionalism. You see, in this sense, the theory says that consciousness is like mass or charge. It's a fundamental thing. You either have it or you don't, and you have it in this way and that other way. You can simulate mass. You can describe how masses attract each other, etc. You can simulate how charges attract and repel each other, but you cannot be mass and charge without having the right properties. So, there can be a perfect zombie, and actually, we're getting close to it. I have one in my pocket. <laughs>